Well, I'm going to make a video <clears throat> about shafts, skegs, and props. Uh, I'm basically on a learning curve for my uh, Vanguard. I've got a Vanguard 35 and a Vanguard 37 Turbo. And uh, I've been trying to figure out how to get the right size prop for my 37 Turbo. And so far, they're all too small. So here's what I got. I originally got a 35 Vanguard and I got the standard SPS shaft, which is like a B110, which is 110 inches long. And then when I got the turbo, which is kind of unique, uh, Swamp Runner sent me a racing shaft, which is, I guess their nomenclature would be B110X so I guess the X is the racing shaft and the taper and the skeg well this this is a really nice shaft the racing shaft so you can see the standard shaft has a kind of a scrawny little skeg on it and the racing shaft has a nice beefy thick skeg on it which helps control it a lot better. I wish all the skegs were like that one. Also the taper is different. This is a shorter taper than that one. This one of course has got your standard key in there. This one has no key. It's just got it's just a taper. There's no key in there. And this, from here to here, is probably about four inches. And the total length on this is probably about five and a half. But the thing I really like about these racing shafts is the skeg. It's, it sweeps, you can see it kind of sweeps back past the, the nut. So it goes way past the, the prop. And this one doesn't. So this one takes basically, with my 35 Vanguard, it does best with an 11 inch standard prop, which is this, it's got a nice diameter on it, but it's, it's just, there's nothing to it. It's just really skinny. The barrel, the bore on it's probably, looks like a two and a half inches. There's no rake to it. It's good for going slow. But once you get going fast, it wants to pop out because nothing really holds it. Nothing really holds it in the water. As it cuts through the water, it just wants to pop out. So these are the racing props. And you can see there's a lot more meat to them as far as the hub goes on them. in the length of the hubs so the standard is 10 uh, this is 11 this does the best I get about 27 miles an hour with just my standard 35 Vanguard 11 inches diameter 9 pitch 12 rake this is like a teeny tiny little uh, 444 prop racing prop that's 8 and 3 8 Got 11 pitch and a 25 rake, which is basically the Valentine shape, the heart shape, the tulip shape. It helps hold it in the water. So I use that prop, it's too small. I use that prop, it's too small. I use that prop, that's the biggest of the series. I call it like a triple number series. 9 inch diameter, 10 pitch, 22 rake. Still too small. I hit the rev limiter. So this is a 444, this is a 555, and this is a 777. At least that's the name of the prop. And you can see, I'll kind of put it on. Let's see how it looks here. Set it on. Got a little bit of threads left for the nut to go on there. It's got a nice, 
nice rake to it. I'll put on the standard prop and kind of let you look at the difference between the, the two of them. So again, you can see this gag sweeps past the prop. It's very stable. This gag does not. If it swept past it, it would, you really wouldn't be able to go in very deep water. But it clears the skeg. Obviously, this kind of prop would just smash into that skeg. Uh, you can also see how this is so much more narrow than this big, thick, wide, beefy one. It doesn't go all the way to the end of the shaft, and this one does, and this one sweeps under. I really like these. I mean, if they had these on a standard shaft, it'd be so much easier to control. So where was I? So this is the biggest prop of the triple number series. I guess you'd call it again, nine inches, 10 pitch, 22 rake on it. And I hit the rev limiter all the time. I can get, I can get just about to full throttle and I'll hit the rev limiter, which on the Vanguard, um, the Vanguard series, the Marine series would be uh, 4,750 RPMs. But the guy that put the turbo on mine, he tuned it a little bit higher, so it goes 4,850 RPMs. And then you can hear the rev limiter hit. So with the, with the 8 and 5 eighths, I hit the rev limiter about half throttle with this one a little bit higher I hit the rev limiter just about at full throttle but it's still it's still bouncing so I called Swamp Runner and they sent me an even bigger prop and this thing is a beast I'll just compare it to the one I, I limit out with I think this is going to be plenty so this is called a J5, and it's it, they drop the diameter down from nine. This is I'd call it the next step up. So from a nine diameter to an eight inch diameter, it went from a ten pitch to a twelve pitch, and a twenty two rake, which again is that sort of tulip Valentine shape. Again, standard prop has no rake, and there's nothing there. It's just like the bore on it's maybe two and a half inches, three inches. The bore on this one is four inches, and it fits just fine on that racing prop. So with this next one, I went up two inches in rake, or I went two inches in pitch, a lot of rake you know and I dropped down an inch in diameter but the thing with this one is the hub on it instead of being four inches is five and a quarter if you take a look there's no way this thing is gonna fit on and you'll get the nut on so the experts say you do not need a prop nut. The tie racers do not use prop nuts. And you can even look. Man, that thing is wicked. Look at that. That thing is huge. If you zoom in, there's no way you get the nut on. So, one option I think would be to bore that out so if you're familiar with the if you're familiar with like the hurricanes or the bullet props you can see here they've got it bored out so from here to here is 15 sixteenths you know and compare it to this one 
This one's not bored. This one's not bored out. This one's bored out. And when I say bored out, it means you can take the prop nut and drop it down into the shaft and then it'll reach the threads. So these bullet props, these hurricane props, they're countersunk about three quarters of an inch. It gives you plenty of a nut left to put on the threads. Where this one, if I had the time and I wanted to do it, I could bore it out, but I'd have to go down probably about an inch and a quarter to actually reach the threads. I can't really do this one-handed, but let's see, I had it here. I'd have to have it, yeah, I'd have to go down. I'd have to go down about an inch, maybe, to get enough threads in there. But anyway, the experts say you don't need a prop nut. So what the ties have done, what the ties do, and I've seen it before, this is just for explan explanation. Let's say you, know, you wanted to get the, I guess I could do it. Let's see, how would I do it? Take off this one. Put this less aggressive one on here. So if you wanted to put it on without the prop nut, you would you gotta do this with the shaft off the motor. So what you'd do is you'd put it up against a wall or a side of a building and you'd put a you know like a block of wood or something there to protect the coupler. And then you come back here. And I guess what the ties do, I've never seen this, but I was told you know, they take an old prop or just a regular prop, stick it over the threads, and they just take a hammer and hit right there on that prop, and it would push it up on the taper. I've also seen them on YouTube take like a pipe that'll fit over the threads and again they put it that end up against the wall not on the motor because you probably ruin your seals and bearings and again you just take a hammer and hit it there and that would force it on and that's enough to keep the prop on you don't need a nut and then the ties will take a piece of propane hose for from like you know your regular 25 50 pound propane tanks and they just stick it over there to protect the threads it doesn't hold a prop on nothing needs to hold a prop on when it spins it's going to push up and hold on itself so i'm kind of I'm going to take this out tomorrow, put this five and a quarter inch barrel on there, and I think I'm just going to take a block of wood because I can't, I don't want to put this on there because it'll mess it up. And it's just a little bit too narrow to hit with a mallet. So I think I'll just take a block of wood and smash it with the mallet and uh, see how she works. This is the next one, getting excited. Hopefully this uh, J5 prop will be able to push my, uh, it's a 20 foot, 48 inch wide flat bottom John. Not the best, not the best boat, but uh, I'm going to take it out tomorrow morning, get this thing pounded on there, and uh, see how it works. So to summarize, 
these racing props versus a standard or these racing shafts versus a standard shaft this taper is not as long this taper is longer there's no keyway on this one this one has a keyway but it really isn't necessary this is a uh, only four inches it takes a low pitch prop or a low a low rate prop like this no problem that'll fit on there just fine this of course would never fit on there the skeg I think makes a really big difference in performance of any kind of tie long tail I think if they had these kind of ske more skegs like this that wrapped back behind the prop instead of these stubby little ones on the regular shafts I think the people would have a lot less problem with them popping out and then finally just look look at that prop that thing is wicked on this thing compared to your standard the rake on that one compared to the rake on this one this will really I mean this will be able to hold hold it down in the water a lot better than this one and that's about it I guess I'll send you a update tomorrow on how the uh, J5 prop went without a prop nut. I'm sure it's not going to fall off later.